teenagers because they can take the joke, okay? When they get angry, you just joke around with them a little bit, they laugh, it's over. You can't do that with little kids. Little kids, when they get angry and they start having tantrums, we're just all innocent bystanders. You've all been there. It's not your kid, but you've been there. You've been in Walmart, been in the toy aisle, and seen a grown woman who's normally sane in every walk of her life losing her freaking mind to this toddler who she swore she had an agreement with before she walked into this establishment. You all know the agreement, right? Because she keeps repeating to the child like a broken record, Ah, Timmy, no, what do we agree on? Do you remember what mommy and you agreed on? Ah, Timmy, no, what did we agree on? Timmy, no, Timmy, no, what did we, Timmy, no, what did, Timmy, Timmy, no, circuit like that you know why i figured it out it's because kids are living breathing reminders that we're not cool anymore remember parents remember you used to be cool like last week and then something happened and made you realize oh my god i'm not cool anymore like you ever turn on the radio and hear a song that makes absolutely no sense to the point where you're like maybe music isn't for me anymore maybe i shouldn't listen Number one song in America right now is a song called I Can't Feel My Face When I'm With You, but I love it. If I can't feel my face, I'm having a stroke. I don't have love for strokes. My niece's favorite musician is a guy named Drake. So some of y'all are familiar with his work. Round of applause, you, you, know, you, you know who Drake is, kid? Yeah, okay, all right. I'm familiar with his work, too. Like, I'm not going to dog him. He is very talented. He can sing. He can act. He can rap. My thing is, why is he so sad about it? Why is it when you turn on the radio and Drake is on, all you get is, I used to call me on my cell phone every time you need my Call me on my cell phone. People aren't calling him on his cell phone. I think he's young, he's rich, he's attractive. He probably just didn't have a ringer on. But if he stopped being so sad, I don't even think that would make a difference, honestly. He'd still find a way to be sad. Look at these missed calls on my cell phone. No new friends, no new friends. Have you ever noticed that all of my songs sound just like this? Uh, I mean, first I rap a little bit, but then I go back to this. I sound like a depressed donkey. <laughs> so yeah, I'm familiar with his work, but I wanted to know why she liked him so much. So I asked him, why do you, why do you like him so much? And I thought she was gonna say something really little girly, like, cause he's so cute. No. She said, because he's the realest in the game. What? Ugh. That's how she talks to me. Ugh. Whatever, Uncle Alvin, you're old. And you're bald. Yeah, I am bald, but the way she said it, hurtful, had nothing to do with anything. I shouldn't have to take lip from somebody who just stopped watching Dora the Explorer two years ago. Like, who are you? What do you know about the world? So I had to put her in her place. I was like, oh, oh, he's the realest in the game, huh? Because he's a thug from Canada. Has anybody ever been to Canada? They're the sweetest people on earth. There's no thugs coming out of Canada. There's no gangster rap album called Straight Out of Saskatchewan that you got to keep your kids away from lest they go to the dark side. They're good people. It's the birthplace of Nickelodeon. Which I let her know, you know your little boyfriend was on a show on Nickelodeon called Degrassi, where he played Jimmy. He was wheelchair Jimmy. He was a kid in a wheelchair. Now, he can walk. That ain't real. But in order to be the realest in the game, according to you, you got to be a singer slash rapper slash actor from Canada and have a hit Nickelodeon's kids show. So the realest in the game are Drake, Justin Bieber, and SpongeBob. Is that what you're telling me? Oh. He's not from Canada. He's from Toronto. <laughs> Okay, clearly somebody stopped watching Dora the Explorer way too early. But how upset could I get? Because I realized, even when she doesn't know the answer to something, doesn't mean anything. All she has to do
do is what she was already doing. She can just type it in and get the answer. That's why we get upset at the new generation because we didn't have that quick information like that. When we were kids, we couldn't just do this and get an answer. We had to remember stuff. They taught us stuff, we had to remember it. These generations, they're empty in the head. They don't have to remember that stuff. They don't have to. We get upset because we had to. My generation, my generation is in here right now. You probably still remember your best friend's phone number and address from when you were a kid because you had to. You understand? When we went to a party and got a cute girl's phone number, we had to remember it. We could write it on our palm, but our palm got sweaty because we got nervous. Now it's gone. You had to remember it. You had to etch it in your head on the way home. Just etch it in there. 684-2822. 684-2822. 684-2822. Not now, Mom. Get out of my face. 684-2822. 684-2822. 684-2822.
me, she better not ever catch me swimming in Lake Michigan. Because, boy, you know you can't swim. You know you can't swim. You knew you couldn't swim before you got in there. If I got to go in there and save your life and I just got my nails done, oh, Lord, Jesus, this morning, I just can't take it with this boy. Heal this boy right now. He's getting on my nerves. That's actually how she spoke to me. She would call in the Lord's name and then state what time of day that it was like he doesn't know. Oh, Lord, Jesus, this afternoon at 7 p.m. I just can't take it. He's getting up. Just heal this boy right now. Mama, I am very healed, but you are embarrassing us. Please. So, kids, remember, be nicer to your parents, because they're not cool anymore, and they know it. But parents, also be more lenient with your kids, because they've gone through stuff that you cannot imagine on a daily basis. See, because when we were kids, we got offered drugs. When we went to school, bad people were offering us drugs, but it was like cigarettes and marijuana. Your kids are getting offered stuff like bath salts you all don't know what I'm talking about don't play with me we just came from the port of Miami I know who I have on this ship all right bath salts it's mixed between hallucinogen and steroid it gives you superhuman strength but if you have too much of it you get naked and eat somebody's face off that's an actual drug that's out there and the reason they don't wage a war on this one is because guess what they cannot properly and accurately trace it in your system so the only test that the FDA has come up with and the DEA has enforced is if you suspect somebody of using bath salts you must immediately <gasps> Ask them, have they been using bath salts? Bath salts? So imagine if you were, you're trying to go to work one morning, but you can't, because your next door neighbor has your car lifted above his head. I'm no good. Oh, 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 hey, uh, excuse me. Um, ha, 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 have you been taking bath salts? Have you been taking two bath salts? You can't fight superhuman strength with speech. The only way you can fight superhuman strength with speech is if you had superhuman speech. And nobody on earth has that. Except for Denzel Washington. That's the only person on earth that could come back with your car in that situation. Because that's what Denzel does. He talks people down. If Denzel was sheriff of Miami for a day, drugs would be eradicated from the streets in 23 hours. He doesn't need the full 24. Because that's what he does. He talks people down. That's a nice car you got over your head there, Tom. Huh? It's a nice car. It's a nice... Hey, why wouldn't it be a nice car? Hmm? Hmm? This is what he does. He starts, he starts confusing people when he talks. Let me ask you something you ever thought, you ever noticed. That in all of my movies, doesn't matter which movie, I have a New York accent. Have you ever thought about that? Well, think about it. Remember training day? I was a cop born and raised in Los Angeles. I had a New York accent. I won an Oscar. You remember Glory? Hmm? Yeah, you remember the tear? I was a Buffalo soldier in the 1800s. Must have been Buffalo, New York. I don't know where that accent came from. Hmm? But this isn't about me, this is about you. You've been taking bath salts? Hmm? You've been, you, you've been taking, it's a simple question, Tom. Don't form at the mouth of me. Have you been taking bath salts? What didn't put the car down, Tom? Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Alvin Williams!